The government soldiers confiscated our things, they took our cattle, they beat the men, they shot some of them in front of us, and then they abused us. Some women were raped by 8 or 10 men, 17 women were raped at the same time, even underage girls were sexually abused. One day in 2003, the army came to my village early in the morning. They came on camels, horses, and jeeps with machine guns. I heard them start shooting and setting houses on fire. It was very scary. I realized that it must have been Janjaweed, government-backed militia. My three brothers and uncle tried to hide me, but before they could get to me, the soldiers shot them right in front of me. After that, several of the rebels came close to me and ordered me to lie down. I refused and began to run away, they shot me in the back, I fell down, then several men came up and forced me to have sex, until I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I had blood on my back. I pretended I was dead and did not get up until nightfall. When they were gone, I got up and went to look for my family. As I walked through the village, I suddenly realized that I was stepping on dead bodies. More than a thousand people had been killed that day. My children managed to hide and survived. They were lucky. Africa. What do we know about the continent? In scientific community, Africa is considered to be the cradle of all mankind. But in general, Africa, unfortunately, is a very long-suffering continent. Heat, wild unbridled nature, endless varieties of viruses and diseases, which spread at the speed of sound because of the flagrant unsanitary conditions, only part of the scourge of this continent. Let us not forget the succession of civil wars and conflicts that have wiped out entire peoples, and of course centuries of colonization and exploitation of the people of the Black Continent. It is believed that about 12.5 million slaves were taken from Africa to North and South America, and according to some estimates, before the ban on the slave trade in the 19th century, more than 14 million people were taken from Africa. In a feature film about a very poor country in the back of Africa, from which diamonds, base metals, gold, etc. are being shipped endlessly to the West, the hero says something like this. Do you know why the earth is red all over the face of the African continent? It is so because it is soaked in the blood of millions of tortured and murdered people on its surface. The Black Continent is a CLONDA lie of all kinds of resources, which under one pretext or another, leave the land therein and make the local population poorer and poorer as a result, although it should be the other way around. Sudan is one of the cash cows of the capital system. Sudan is a country of opposites. The north of the country is the stronghold of Islam, here, the Sunni Muslim 70%, along with this sea of prohibitions, and in addition, the dry desert climate. In the south, about 10% of Christians live here. People are more energetic and open. The climate is equatorial, with an abundance of fauna and flora. Since the vast majority of the population of Sudan are Muslims, Islam is the state religion, which began to spread here in the 8th century ad. Sudan was a colony of England during the period, 1898 to 1955. After the First World War, the British colonizers set out to turn Sudan into a cotton-producing country. A national bourgeoisie began to form in Sudan. The British administration, in order to consolidate its power, encouraged ethnic and political separatism among the traditional and Christian population of the Sudanese South. Thus, it laid the groundwork for future ethnic and religious conflicts. On January 1, 1956, Sudan was proclaimed an independent state. The central government in Khartoum, in which Muslims occupied key positions, refused to create a federal state, leading to a revolt by southern officers and a civil war that lasted from 1955 to 1972. The second civil war in Sudan was a conflict from 1983 to 2005 between the central government of Sudan and the Sudan People's Liberation Army. Darfur ethnic cleansing refers to the ongoing massacres and sexual violence committed against Darfuri men, women, and children in Western Sudan. The killings began in 2003 and were the first mass ethnic conflict of the 21st century. Mass murders and bullying are being carried out by a group of armed and state-sponsored Arab militias known as the Janjaweed, which roughly translates to devils on horseback or the Rapid Support Force, or SF. As of spring 2020, more than 480,000 people had been killed and more than 2.8 million displaced. The ongoing conflict in Darfur, Sudan, was declared a crime against humanity by U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell in testimony before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee on September 9, 2004. George W. Bush called for a doubling of international troops in Darfur, and British Prime Minister Tony Blair wrote an open letter to members of the European Union 
Academia calling for a united response to the crisis. But has this helped the people of Sudan? George Clooney played a role in uncovering evidence of atrocities in Darfur. The American film actor has traveled extensively to Sudan on a UN peace mission since 2005. He was present during the independence referendum in Juba, South Sudan, on January 9, 2011. In October 2010, while in Sudan trying to find ways to prevent bloodshed, Clooney spent the night in the desert, where lying on the sand and looking at the stars he came up with an idea even more outlandish than helping with the peace talks. That idea was to launch his own spy satellite over Sudan. Clooney said, I thought, why can I find my house on Google Earth, see my parking lot outside my house, but I can't find the places where war crimes are committed. You know, then I realized we can do it. It's real. Upon his return to the US, Clooney contacted Google Maps and satellite photography specialist Digital Globe. He rented time on three Digital Globe satellites placed in the stratosphere over Sudan, and the team processed the images and overlaid them on Google Maps in minutes. The trick was not just to get the images and evidence of the crimes, but to make it as close to real time as possible and do the analysis quickly. Clooney said. George Clooney's efforts have paid off. Amnesty International's investigation, using the very same satellite imagery, uncovered horrifying evidence of the repeated use by Sudanese government forces of what are believed to be chemical weapons against civilians, including very young children in one of the most remote areas of Darfur. The scale and brutality of these attacks are hard to describe in words. Images and videos we saw during our research are truly shocking. One shows a young child screaming in pain before dying. Many pictures show young children covered in sores and blisters. Some could not breathe and were vomiting blood, said Tehran Hassan, director of crisis research for Amnesty International. Amnesty International presented its findings on these incidents to two independent chemical weapons experts. Both concluded that the evidence strongly indicated exposure to vesicants or blister agents, such as the warfare agents sulfur mustard, luizate, or nitrous mustard. It's hard to exaggerate how brutal the effects of these chemicals are when they come into contact with the human body. Chemical weapons have been banned for decades in recognition of the fact that the suffering they cause can never be justified. Based on testimony from caregivers and survivors, Amnesty International estimated that between 200 and 250 people may have died as a result of chemical weapons poisoning, many or most of whom were children. Amnesty International presented its findings on these incidents to two two independent chemical weapons experts. Both concluded that the evidence strongly indicated exposure to vesicants or blister agents, such as the warfare agents sulfur mustard, luizate, or nitrous mustard. The following footage may shock you. Therefore, we ask all susceptible people to turn off this video. These are just a few photos from a secret archive from thousands of photos and reports documenting the atrocities taking place in Darfur. The material was collected by African Union observers, who are just about the only people who have been able to travel extensively in this part of Sudan. There are thousands of such photographs. Many of them show attacks on children and are too gruesome to show. One heartbreaking photo in the archives shows the cuffed hands of a teenage girl as Soleil's girl's school burned alive. Sudanese militiamen often sexually abused over teenage girls and then maim or kill them. Many tens of thousands of girls and women have been sexually abused since the beginning of 2003. Approximately half, 49% of all women reported being sexually assaulted, and half of the sexual assaults were described as having taken place in the immediate vicinity of an internally displaced persons camp near the Ugandan border. This pervasive climate of impunity culminated in the mass rape of girls and women in Tabitha, North Darfur, October 30, 2014, November 1, 2014. About 220 girls and women were sexually abused for 36 hours, by soldiers of the regular Sudanese Armed Forces (SAF) on the orders of the SAF garrison commander near Tabitha. Nine days later, November 10, 2014, UNAMID was finally allowed to conduct an investigation, but found the village intimidated by the mass presence of security forces when UNAMID investigators arrived. The African Union archives contain many reports of observers from the scene, and they emphasize that the massacre is being carried out by and with the support of the Sudanese government trying to clear the territory of non-Arabs. Many pictures show men in Sudanese army uniforms looting and burning African villages. I hope that the African Union will open its archive to publicly demonstrate what is happening in Darfur. The archive also contains an unusual document seized from a representative of the Janjaweed, which appears to describe a policy of extermination. The goals include 
To change the demographics of Darfur and free it from African tribes, the document calls for. It calls for killing, burning villages and farms, terrorizing people, confiscating property from members of African tribes, and expelling them from Darfur. Any document should be treated with skepticism because it can be faked, but the African Union believes the document is authentic. The 70,000 casualty figure is sometimes cited as the estimated number of deaths in this nightmare, but this is simply the UN estimate of the number of deaths in one seven-month period from nonviolent causes. It is difficult to know the total death toll over the two years of conflict, in part, because the Sudanese government blocks a UN team from traveling to Darfur and making such an estimate. But independent estimates exceed 220,000, and that number is increasing by about 10,000 a month, according to UN Sudanese affairs officials. But in all this nightmare, there is a glimmer of light, and his name is Sam Childers, or as they call him, the preacher with the machine gun. In 1998, a former biker gang member named Sam Childers joined a church mission trip to Sudan to help repair huts damaged during the Second Sudanese Civil War. While in Sudan, Sam came across the mutilated body of a child who had been blown up by a landmine. The experience broke him, and Sam vowed to God to do everything in his power to help the children of Sudan. Despite the conditions in the war zone, Sam embarked on a project the locals thought impossible. He built a shelter near the border with Uganda. Ten years later, more than 1,000 children found shelter at Sam's shelter, and today there are more than 150 children there. In the United States, Sam pastors the Shekinah Fellowship Church he built in Central City, Pennsylvania. Childers Angio, Angels of East Africa, AOEA employs 300 people in Kampala, Uganda, and about 200 people in his orphanages and other projects. He owns and operates training centers for displaced youth, mostly victims of war. That's how one man can fight against the horrific abominations of the local government. What happened to the perpetrators of all this lawlessness in South Sudan? In 2019, a court in Targum sentenced former Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir to two years in prison on charges of corruption, illegal gifts, and possession of foreign currency. Justice was not not served in the end. Al-Bashir escaped justice just as Uganda's bloody newscaster Idi Amin did. Idi Amin died in Saudi Arabia in 2003 at the age of 78, never having been punished for the atrocities he committed in his native Uganda. But that's another story we can touch on in our next video. Write your comments and would you like to know more about the bloody conflict in Rwanda, which was supervised personally by the country's leader 